Okay, let's have a look at creating a video montage in Premiere Pro. So I've got my new project. I'm going to call it Montage. Hit it. OK. And then I'm going to bring in uh, a series of clips. These clips are all portrait, you'll see. And uh, I'm going to need to make a sequence that's not portrait. I'm going to manually make a sequence. So I'm going to go down to, to my new item icon, click on that, and create a new sequence. I'm going to just actually go into the settings because I want to custom make my sequence. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's a custom option. I'll go 25 frames a second. Yes, I want it 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to call this uh, montage. And there I've got my new sequence. Now I want to stack all these clips on top of each other. Uh, if I just list them out here, you can see here I've got several different clips. And when I put one onto the timeline, because the settings are different from the sequences. It's going to ask me, do I want to change the sequence? No, I've specifically made my sequence a 16 by 9, although my clips are 9 by 16. So I'll say, keep existing settings. I'm going to pop these clips on top. And what I'm actually doing is I'm making a bit of a composite here. So rather than traditional sequencing uh, of clips by putting one clip after the other, I'm putting them on top of each other. So you can see there I've got uh, seven different clips. I'm using seven video tracks. I, in fact, none of these have audio. So I'm just going to press uh, Option or Alt, click and drag to select the clip's video audio attribute. And I'll just delete that. I'll also just right click to the right of one of these audio tracks. And I'll say Delete Tracks. And then I can tell it to delete all empty audio tracks. That will delete all the audio tracks, but it must leave me one. OK, I only want this to be about six seconds. So I'm going to bring my current time indicator to six. I'm going to press the W key, and that's going to trim everything back. Anything that may be left over, I'll just select and delete. And I'm just going to zoom in, and there I've got all my clips. Now, at the moment, they're all stacked on top of each other. So I'm only seeing the first clip. If I select the first one, and go up to my fixed controls. I want to scale this down, let's say down to uh, 10%. And you can see now, there it is at 10%. Uh, now I can see the next clip behind it. In fact, I think I'm going to bring this to not maybe 10%, 12%. Uh, if I select the motion tab in the effects controls and copy, it then copies all the attributes for motion. And what I want to do is select all the other clips and then go edit, paste. And in a few seconds, they're now all the same size. Now I'm going to lay them out. Obviously, I don't want them all stacked on top of each other. I'm going to create a montage. I'm just going to lay them out on the screen. Um, before I do that, uh, if I play back, you can see my playback is struggling because I'm showing uh, seven streams of ultra high definition footage. Now, even on a really powerful machine with solid state drives, this is still going to struggle um, depending on the media you give it, of course. Uh, but uh, it's going to be much better for me to work with proxies. So uh, I imported them as they are. I didn't have them as proxies when I ingested them. So I'm going to do it retrospectively. I'm going to select each of those clips. I'm going to right click on uh, any one of them because they're all selected. I'm going to go down to proxy. And I want to choose Create Proxies. Uh, I'm going to choose the H.264 because it's the smallest file size, but it could be, in fact, any of those settings. Um, and I definitely want it low resolution, a low resolution proxy. Um, you can see, because I've scaled these down to about 12% of the original, uh, I don't need all that resolution, especially for not working with a proxy. I want to be able to play back in real time. I, I'm going to allow it to make uh, a proxy folder next to the original. So I'll leave that and I'll go and hit OK. Now that's going to open up the Adobe Media Encoder in the background, which will start chugging through that. Um, I'm not going to sit there and wait for that to finish. I'm going to make a start with laying out my clips. Now, uh, it could take a while to lay them out here. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to have a little look at the Media Encoder. You can see there it is chugging away, making those proxy files. I'm just going to minimize this down and let that continue in the background. 
Now what I want to do is I want to go up to my view option and I want to choose show guides. This is going to show my guidelines with these uh, blue lines indicated here. And that means now if I select a clip, so if I uh, select on this top clip and then go and double click, it's going to put a bounding box around it and I can go and move that. I'm going to push this down somewhere near the bottom left. Now I'm kind of moving it around freestyle there. What I want to do now is go up to view and go to snap to the program monitor. That's going to be much more helpful because now as I move it around, it's going to snap to these guides. You can see the center point there. The anchor point is now snapping to that guide or the edges are snapping also. So that's that one. I'm going to go through sequentially, grab my second clip. I'll click it to select it. Then I'll double click in the program monitor. I'm going to go and move it here. I'm just going to go through each of these. So with the original media there, my playback is not going to play back anything close to real time. But if I go and enable my proxies, now all of these clips are referring to the proxy version. And you can see that's going to play back much more efficiently. I'm just going to enable loop playback so I can just watch that through. Okay, nice and smooth playback. So I'm going to keep proxies on for the rest of this workflow. Uh, okay, so my guides have been very helpful in laying this out. Uh, I, I'm just going to go and hide them now because I don't want to get distracted with seeing them. So I'll just uh, not show the guides. There we go. Uh, I think I'm just going to make each of my images a little bit smaller just so they're not kind of interconnecting. So I'm going to go up up here. I'll bring it down now to uh, what would it look like if I bring it down to 11 percent. Yeah, I can do that on each of them. Notice this time I'm not just copying it because if I copy the uh, motion attributes, it's going to copy the position and the scale. I don't want the position to be copied because I've made that unique feature then. So there we go. I've created a little montage of all of those. I might choose to have them slightly appear at different times. So I'm just going to go through in steps of uh, five frames. So uh, this is my first one that appears, say, from the beginning. I can go along five frames by hitting the right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five. And say, oh, this clip here, I'm going to just move that back five frames. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll move the next clip back five frames. Now, there's a shortcut to jump five frames at a time. So if you press Shift and the right arrow key, that just jumps five frames. So I'm going to Shift, right arrow key. Shift, right arrow key, and shift, right arrow key. Now each of those is going to appear slightly staggered one after the other. And then they're going to disappear in the same sort of way. Now I might want these appearing like that, or I might want to have uh, a transition on them. Probably the easiest transition is a fade. If I have a single clip selected like this, and I press Shift D, that adds my default transition. You can see I've added a cross dissolve to both the beginning and the end of the clip. So if I play that back, now that clip has a dissolve at the beginning and then a dissolve at the end. Of course, if I select all the clips, press Shift D, then they're all going to dissolve on and then they're all going to dissolve off. If for any reason I wanted to use a different transition, I can go over to my effects, down to my video transitions, down to my dissolves. The default transition, the one that's applied using shortcuts, uh, is highlighted there in blue, cross dissolve. Let's say I wanted to use something else like perhaps a, a wipe transition. 
Uh, well, if I go to the transition, I want to right mouse button click and say set as default transition, select that. Now, if I've got the clips, all the clips selected, although I've already got the default transition on there, I've changed the default. So now if I press shift D, now they've all got a wipe on them. And if I play that back, Okay, there's different transitions you can use for different effects. Okay, so I've created a video montage there, multiple clips. These are all ultra high definition clips, but you can see I can play with them, edit them, work with them real time inside of Premiere Pro because they are proxy files. They're much lighter, easier to work. In actual fact, because I've scaled them down so much, I may not even need to uh, go back to the original media, but to be safe, I just click that one time, it's now looking at the original media. One time again, it's looking at the proxy media. So it's as simple as that to build quite a complex composition within Premiere Pro without needing to send it over to After Effects. I've been able to create multi-layered composition there inside of Premiere Pro and I've got real time working and feedback. So that's how we can work and a smarter way inside of Premiere Pro.